first at four, breaking news from Hollywood. We are just getting word. A legendary actor and sex symbol has died. Also, a massive auto recall. There are concerns about possible fires in nearly two million pickup trucks. What drivers need to know now. She says she wants to be a role model for young people, but she's a role model for older people, too. I'm going to introduce you to one of the stars of the new Nike commercial that airs this evening. Just a little bit of sunshine starting to emerge from the clouds. Things are looking up in the short term, but is Gordon going to make a mess of our weekend? Find out right now, first at four. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. We start with word that actor Burt Reynolds has died. You'll probably remember him from movies like Smokey and the Bandit and Deliverance, Boogie Nights. He was one of the biggest box office stars in the late 70s and early 80s. His charm and good looks made him a sex symbol long before People Magazine was naming the sexiest man alive. Reynolds also had high-profile romances with Dinah Shore, Sally Field, and Lonnie Anderson. His agent says Reynolds died of cardiac arrest. He was 82 years old. Closer to home this afternoon, former state Senator Burt Johnson learned his punishment today after pleading guilty to conspiring to steal money. Johnson placed a ghost employee on the public payroll to pay off his personal loan debt. The employee was paid more than $23,000 in taxpayer money, which Johnson now owes in restitution. He has been sentenced to 90 days in jail and will have to be supervised for two years after his release. Plus, he will be confined to a home for the first 90 days after jail. The 51-year-old Canadian man who was killed when the plane he was flying crashed this morning in St. Clair County has been identified as Stephen Massanouve. It happened in Kimball Township, just a quarter of a mile west of the runway at St. Clair County International Airport, where it was overdue for arrival. We're told the pilot was the only person on board when the plane went down. The FAA is working to find out exactly what happened. People across Michigan today are remembering billionaire Richard DeVos, the co-founder of Amway. He died today at his Western Michigan home due to complications from an infection. Governor Rick Snyder says DeVos was an incredible businessman, philanthropist, and a true Michigander. DeVos also owned the Orlando Magic and was the father-in-law of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. He was 92 years old. In other news this afternoon, Ford is recalling nearly 2 million pickup trucks because of a possible fire danger. We're talking about F-150 pickups. The recall involves 2015 through 2018 regular cab and super crew cab vehicles. The pretensioners in the front seat belts could actually generate sparks and that could start fires. Ford says it is aware of 23 reports where sparks of fire did break out, but there have been no injuries. Dealers will fix that problem for you for free. You can read more and share this story at clickondetroit.com under the Recalls tab. After the rain comes that cool down. Ben Bailey tracking the evening forecast and temperatures taking a little dip tonight, Ben. Yeah, Karen, yesterday at this time we were feeling like 96. Now outside the air temperature is actually 76, so it's feeling 20 degrees cooler than what we were looking at yesterday at this time. A little bit of a north wind in there right now. Uh, there's still plenty of clouds out there, but we should see some of those start to fade tonight. And for live radar picking up just a little bit of moisture. There's not much out there. A couple sprinkles at best, and we'll see those dry out here pretty quickly going into the evening and temperatures really dropping tonight. We'll be down to 63 by midnight tonight as numbers continue down to the 50s in most locations and the humidity continues going down too. So we'll look at a dry cooler start to the weekend. And of course, the artist formerly known as Gordon starts to arrive on Sunday. We'll check that out for you in just a few minutes. In Ohio, four people, including the shooter, are dead after a lone gunman opened fire in a downtown Cincinnati bank. According to Cincinnati police, a man armed with a gun walked onto the loading dock of the Fifth Third Bank building and opened fire. He then moved into the lobby where he engaged at least three police officers. He was eventually shot and killed by police. In addition to the three killed, two others were shot. They were taken to the hospital where they are in critical and serious condition this afternoon. He was actively shooting uh, innocent victims, it appears, and our officers were able to kill him and stop the threat very quickly. So you, we could imagine the situation being much worse. No officers were injured during the incident. The gunman's motive so far remain unclear. 
There has been an avalanche of criticism and condemnation over a New York Times op-ed about President Trump. It's been about 24 hours since the piece went viral and it has rocked Washington. Devin Skillian has been sorting through all the new reaction and the denials in the mystery of who wrote it. It Devin. has been quite a 24 hours, Karen. It seems most Republicans in Washington are more concerned about finding the person who wrote the op-ed than uh, the disturbing descriptions of Donald Trump's presidency contained therein. Uh, the article paints a White House uh, in which there is a, quote, resistance working within to stop President Trump's worst impulses. Here's just some of the reaction that's been pouring in. First Lady Melania Trump says the author is, quote, sabotaging the country through, uh, as she put it, cowardly action. House Speaker Paul Ryan says he understands Trump's unconventional tactics bother people, but says the person who wrote the article should quit. A congressional ally of the president, Congressman Mark Meadows, says Congress should investigate who wrote it. And figures like Vice President Mike Pence and the Director of National Intelligence have denied that they wrote it. So has Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. I find the media's uh, efforts in this regard to undermine this administration incredibly disturbing. And, and I, I'll answer your other question directly because I know someone will say, gosh, you didn't answer the question. It's not mine. Uh, the president has tweeted the New York Times should turn the author over for national security purposes, but no one has elaborated on what that threat exactly might be. The New York Times, though, has said it will never reveal who wrote the piece for them. So, Karen, obviously much more to come. Reaction on this comes in by the minute, it seems. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, you Devin. For the second day, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh faced questioning from the Senate Judiciary Committee with the nominee noncommittal on a major question about Roe versus Wade. Kavanaugh believes the landmark abortion case is settled law, but he would not commit regarding whether he thinks the ruling is correct law. He also faced his toughest questioning from Senator Kamala Harris about the Mueller investigation. He denied he had conversations with attorneys from President Trump's personal law firm regarding the probe. He'll face more questions tomorrow. With all the attention on Colin Kaepernick and the new Nike ad campaign, the other people in the ad are being overshadowed. And we're talking about local heroes, like a young woman from Grand Blank. Don't settle for homecoming queen or linebacker. Do both. Lose 120 pounds. Our Paula Dutman spoke man. with that remarkable young woman and found a key message is getting lost in all the political Don't battles. You have to be like anybody. If people say your dreams are crazy. The commercial airs in prime time tonight. It is Nike. It has arguably some of the best marketing on the planet. But tonight, while hyping its brand, it is also pushing a message and a messenger. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Part of that ad, a rock star of an athlete, a football player, a power lifter, a water polo player, a cheerleader, a homecoming queen, a woman. Grand Blanks, Alicia Woolcott. So they said they found me online, they saw my story, um, and they texted me, and I like texted my mom to make sure she thought it was real. She's not just a role model for little girls, but big girls and boys too. She is a kick asset to every team she's on. And three weeks ago, when Nike recognized her and tapped her to be in its dream crazy commercial, like any other 18-year-old, she was floored. The message is a powerful message, and it's a good message that I stand behind. Stand up for what you believe in. Do what you want to do, regardless of what people tell you. Just like there's, there was people that told me, you can't play football. And I was like, please watch me, because I'm going to. On a day she makes an international commercial debut, she's a college kid, the assistant varsity football coach for her high school team, and a player for Detroit Dark Angels women's pro football team. I think people need to look at this ad not so much on this one debate, the national anthem. You need to look at that ad and look at people who said, you know what, I'm not going to let things in my life, adversity, keep me from living my life. In a nation that has always defied gravity and control, the message is part of our nation's fiber. Yet, the politics, once again, have divided. I think he stood up for what he believed in. Whether people agree with it or not, it's what he believed in, and I think you have to do what you believe in, regardless of whether people like it or not. Like, I decided to play football as a girl, and there was a lot of people that didn't like it. There's a lot of people online that sent like negative comments about it and how it was like a man's sport and how like I shouldn't have been there, but I was not gonna let that stop me from like pursuing my dreams.
Okay, so let's put this in perspective for an 18-year-old college kid who is sharing the national stage with the likes of LeBron James, Serena Williams, Colin Kaepernick, Alfonso Davies. That's her right there getting ready for practice as the assistant varsity football coach uh, at her high school. This year, three girls, three, are now playing football for Grand Blank teams. She is not talking about it. She is doing it. And the world will see it tonight. Paula, thank you so much for highlighting her, a very important part of that commercial. A great athlete and a very well-spoken young lady as well. Thank you, Paula. She still, really still ahead, trouble in the broadcast booth. We are hearing two play-by-play -play guys for the Detroit Tigers got physical with each other. It's one of our trending stories. Also, broken bathrooms in one of the worst possible places. The story behind this video a little later on. Up first, you'll see a canine cop in action. We have the body cam video of a suspect chase and the takedown.